macOS is an amazing operating system with its own advantages and disadvantages, but what if we could improve it? And I'm not saying we're about to crack into the code system settings. Today I'm going to show you applications that change the way you experience macOS and improve it many times over. There's really no point in using macOS without these apps. So make sure you watch the video from start to finish so you don't miss anything important and feel free to share your favorite apps in the comments below. I would like to start with security, the security of our files to be more exact. At first glance, Encrypto doesn't seem to be a particularly useful program unless you're faced with a situation where you need to protect files or a folder with a password. And as we know, in macOS you can do it. And yes, this seemingly insignificant utility helps to literally protect your files. After all, you don't want someone else to accidentally see your secret documents. The upsides are beautifully clear and simple. The app is light and easy to use, it's absolutely free and is available both on macOS and Windows. And this is a great advantage nowadays. Next up, let's focus on some productivity apps. And if it wasn't for Spark, it wouldn't be so easy to interact with email. Sure, macOS has a standard email client, but don't you get the feeling that it hasn't been updated in years? Craig Federighi was emphasizing a mail update at WWDC this year, but Ventura hasn't come out yet. Anyway, Spark is an indispensable email client for me and for our team. Extremely easy to interact with, a built-in calendar, quick replies, and even built-in chats are in this email client. For example, you got an email from someone in Spark, and instead of replying using the standard email way, you can start a conversation right in the app, just like an iMessage. Very handy, especially if it's about discussion that can take on for a long time. Really, the standard email client in macOS is pretty good, but if you want a breath of fresh air, I highly recommend. Keeping on with the topic of productivity, I have a question. The standard reminders in macOS, do you use it? And if so, then how often? And is it really that useful? Honestly, I'm not entirely satisfied with the features of this app, and you could be satisfied, but what if I show you things free? It's a flawless to the client with a very nice interface and most importantly, awesome features. You can create reminders, tasks to do, but on top of that, you can create projects to put tasks in and see all the completed tasks up to that point. It's also a handy layout of upcoming reminders. There's a lot to say about this software, but I personally like its interface. You can feel the development approach, but not without downsides. The app is available on iOS, iPadOS, and macOS, and as sad as it is, the app costs $10 on iPhone, but on Mac, please pay 60 bucks for a simple reminder with a nice interface. But nevertheless, to keep track of tasks with things free is really convenient. And we also have a Microsoft app in our list. Why? Because sometimes it happens that MacBook users have Android smartphones, and I respect all customers' choices, even those who use uncomfortable phones. Anyway, if you use a Mac as a computer and Android as your main phone, surely you'd like all the convenience of the Apple ecosystem just between the two OS. Well, here is Microsoft To Do is a great task manager for macOS as well as iOS, iPadOS, Android, and even Windows. And seriously, this is the only Microsoft app that I like both in features and interface. Very nice app where you can also plan, plan and plan again. And a side effect that comes from hard work tasks to do lists is usually anxiety. It's very easy to get anxious about your new deadlines and one of the ways I used to overcome it is the app called Timeless. It replaces the clock on your Mac with a subtle indicator showing a time range instead of the actual time. From 8 to 11 instead of 10 hours and 14 minutes. Very small and simple thing but it really makes your life easier. Sometimes it happens that we want to watch a movie that is not on streaming services or download an application that the developers forgot about a long time ago or it's impossible to download from the official website. So a torrent client and with it the extremely handy downloader called Fox or Fall X. That's it. It's exactly the same torrent client as uTorrent on Windows, but with a nicer interface and the ability to download not just torrent files, but also any files from the web. Set a download speed limit, pause the download, create torrent files and share with your friends without any problems with Fox. 
or full X. Just don't break the law and don't do anything illegal. The default screenshot making utility in macOS is nice and simple, but lacks some features like text recognition, OCR, editing screenshots and recordings, cloud integration, but that's exactly what CleanShot X offers. The creators of this app promise seven apps in one. In the built-in editor, you can highlight, annotate, or hide something. Just click on the pencil icon in the quick access overlay to edit screen capture very quickly and easily. A simple app that solves the speed problem is called Quit All. It allows you to speed your Mac by quitting background apps, but you don't lose any changes when doing so. You can quit all apps at once from the menu bar and force quit and reopen apps that are stuck. Very simple and lightweight, but it surprises me how often I use it. It's not the first time I mentioned this app, but I can't stress enough how useful it is. iStat menus is extremely useful if you want to monitor exactly what your Mac is doing. For example, the CPU, GPU, SSD, and RAM usage. So if your computer is slowing down, this will help you understand what's going on and eventually solve these problems. You can access iStat menus as well as Quit All, Timeless, Fox, CleanShot X, and 230 plus AnyTask apps at a reasonable price in one place. And this place is Setup, which is the sponsor of today's video. And these applications are available for only $9.99 for a monthly subscription. Subscription. So basically setup is filling the macOS and iOS gaps in certain contexts and it provides good alternatives to default apps. I think it's an essential toolbox for macOS and iOS and to learn more about setup check out the link in the description below. And speaking of Windows, I can't avoid mentioning the possibility of installing Windows on macOS. Yeah, it used to be much more convenient, you could just install Windows instead of macOS and call it a day. Now the situation has totally changed. On Mac MacBooks with the M1 chip and higher, you can't install Windows as the main operating system. But even so, you can still run Windows without any problems by using a virtual machine called Parallels Desktop. All you have to do is to install Parallels, download an ISO file of Windows 11 on your Mac, and simply open it using the mentioned app. And voila, complete Windows is available to you in a few clicks. It's not without its flaws, but in general, the interaction with additional OS is done at the highest level, especially considering the fact that macOS keeps on running in the background. Another one extremely beautiful but also useful application is Craft. And if you think it's just for craftsmen, you are wrong. It's kind of a note-taking app. You can create all kinds of documents and share them with your friends and colleagues. And last but not least, it's all put together in a very nice way. But why Craft if we have Notion? Notion is much more functional, you may ask me. And you already answered your own question. Notion is a very very heavy app. To interact with it, you need to watch more than one or two video tutorials. Plus, if a person doesn't want to go deep into creation of personal databases, etc., and just design notes beautifully, you won't find a better app. The only downside is that Craft is not available on other operating systems. If you've just bought a Mac, or if you've switched from Windows to macOS altogether, you may have problems with archives. On Windows, you just install WinRAR and have no problems with the most common file formats. And macOS as well as Windows can open archives with the standard features, but if you suddenly download a file with a RAR extension, Keka will come to your help. It's an absolutely free utility for unarchiving and archiving files. There is nothing more to describe because I have already described all its features in two words. You either drag an archive and get files uncompressed, or drag and drop a folder into the app window to get an archive. And of course, a password can also also be said. I have been using it for the last few years and I have never had a problem with it. Definitely recommend this app. If you, like me, have to interact with the calendar a lot, then what's the problem? It's already on your Mac. Just kidding, of course. In fact, I wouldn't call the standard calendar something inconvenient or anything like that. But if you want a calendar on steroids, Fantastical is what you need. And what I like best is the ability to see the calendar and upcoming events right in the status bar. In my opinion, this feature should be in any calendar app 
which is called out of the box. And of course, all the basic calendar features are there, otherwise the developers wouldn't have won so many nominations with this application. If you are a student or you have to interact with foreign clients on a freelance basis, for example, then maybe, I'm not saying for sure, you sometimes use Google Translate or Yahoo Translate. And these services are really amazing, but when it comes to quality translation with artificial intelligence, I don't know about you, but I think of Deeple. It seems like just a translator, but it also has a separate app. It means you don't have to go to your browser every time you want to translate a word. Plus, it has artificial intelligence for Deeple to better understand the context of a sentence and translate it based on that. And what's more, it offers synonyms if that's what you need. All in all, if I had to choose between translators, I would give preference to Deeple, even though both Google and Yahoo do a great job. Actually, there are a lot more cool apps and we have one more video on this channel with useful apps, which you can watch by clicking here and also click here. Go ahead and destroy the like button if this video was helpful to you and see you in the next one.